Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. And today we're going to be talking about bananas. I'm going to be giving you a lot of tips on banana care, um, how to take care of them along the way, and varieties as well. This one here in front of me, this um, short banana tree that you see here, is actually called an ice cream banana plant, which I purchased a year ago. And now as you can see, um, I'm six feet tall, my reach is eight, and you can see that it's probably about 10, 12 feet tall right now. Probably will grow, grow a few more feet before it finally puts out its blossoms and, and starts producing those ice cream bananas that my children are definitely looking forward to as well as myself tasting. So here we are with an ice cream banana plant as well. When you pick them up from the nursery, they're this small. If you're looking for something shorter, there's other varieties um, such as there's a dwarf Cavendish, which is your Chiquita bananas. Um, but I highly recommend that when it comes to introducing varieties in your garden to try something new such as the ice cream banana. There's an apple um, banana variety as well. And we'll see a few more that are on this label that are recommended. If you want to zoom in over here, I'll show you the label of this um, particular variety. And this here says the ice cream banana. And you can take a look as well. It says this food does not need um, pollination. So one banana plant by itself will actually pollinate itself. However, if you turn this over and near the bottom, it says if desired, one of the varieties below for pollination. And then it recommends all of these different varieties such as um, the Cavendish, which I just mentioned. Goldfinger is a very popular variety. Um, Gold Nan is one you can find. Ice cream is what we have here. Um, Ladyfinger is another very popular tasty flavor. Um, but here's you know a list of varieties. Um, and as you can see, when it comes to the ice cream banana, um, it says it'll bloom in the summer. And I'm gonna be um, removing some of the suckers around it, which we're gonna um, explain in just a minute. The average size is 15 feet tall um, by six feet wide. So um, 15 feet, right now we're about 12 feet. So we've got a few more feet to go and then that blossom should come out and we should start having bananas such as these, um, which are of, of a, van a vanilla flavor. So, so again, this is the size you're gonna be picking up from the nursery within 12 months it'll be this big and ready for bloom. Um, right now we're in the month of May, so we're a few months away from that blossom and hopefully by fall, hopefully enjoying sweet bananas from our backyard. So I'm gonna put this aside and what we're gonna do here today, and as you can see is there's all of these suckers and these are basically the, the pups as they're sometimes referred to that are coming off of the root base. They're actually sucking and enjoying the benefits of those leaves that are actually gaining um, the sun and the sugars that are coming down to the root and in exchange it's making all of these new plants around it. What we have to be careful of and what most farmers will do is only allow one of these pups to survive and all the other ones are removed so all the energy actually goes into the primary plant and then one of these pups will replace the parent plant after it produces its fruit. For now we're actually going to um, and my design actually for this year is to allow two pups to remain. As you can see, we still have one, two, a really small one over here, but it counts as well. Three, four, five, six, seven, and another little small pup over here. So eight pups. We've got eight banana trees over here potentially that we can scatter throughout the garden or give away to the community um, around us. So, and I'm sure they'd be interested in having this variety into their yards as well. But what I'm going to show you today is um, how to actually remove one of these pups. So if you want to zoom in a little bit closer over here, um, design wise, I'm going to leave two pups. We're going to leave the one to the left and we're going to leave the one to the right. And all the other ones are going to come out, such as the one in the back, because we don't want the bananas to be growing too close to this wall behind me, nor do we want any pups in front of the banana plant to actually grow towards my vegetable garden space. So we're actually designing it to just basically grow in this um, lateral direction. So we're going to keep one pup, a second pup on this side, all the other pups will be removed and the easy one that I'm going to remove right now is actually towards the back. So what I'm going to do first is pull back on these wood chips that are helping to retain moisture. So here we're pulling it back. And as you can see here if you want to zoom in real close, you can actually see I'm already coming across some earthworms and you want to make sure that when you are gardening here's a, here's a little worm that's wiggling around there's roly-polies there's um, slugs 
the whole bunch of things that are actually consuming all of this organic matter and every time I water is enriching the soil below so um, once we actually do this within the next week after I water it um, over the next few days I'm gonna actually fertilize it with one more round and it's a good idea every 30 days to actually be fertilizing so now I've removed the wood chips and I've got my smallest shovel that I'm going to wedge between this banana pup and the parent the parent banana so we're just gonna push that in there and the goal is just to get a few roots with this pup I'm gonna push down and pull back and here it goes um, so with what I just did and another point I want to make is there's no flowers on this plant right now we're about a month or two away from it going into bloom if it was in bloom we would not be doing this as this does um, stress the tree out a little bit um, so here we are with the pup it's now loose you pull it out and if you zoom in over here take a look at that take a look at all the roots that we got to help it give give a great start and this is where we actually cut it and sever it away from the parent plant so this now will go like so into a bucket of dirt I've already started I put a, a couple of inches of soil near the bottom and we're just going to I just took some garden soil and mixed it with some compost from the garden and we're just gonna be backfilling the soil like so press it down occasionally not too hard but just enough to remove the air pockets around the soil and then let me set that down right here in a flat spot and the next step we're gonna take is I've got my watering can over here I've got a product such as this which is super thrive um, it's a well-known product for actually stimulating plants if it was a cutting it would help with um, encouraging root growth I'm primarily using this because it's got B1, which is known for assisting with um, transplant shock. And I'll be adding a few drops also when I actually water the parent plant behind me um, after I remove the rest of the suckers. We'll be watering it with this solution as well to help it with transplant shock. So we're just gonna water that down. And we'll water it one more time shortly. And, and the next step, and the last step we're gonna do here is, um, is spray with this solution of Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint and this is what the label looks like over here. Um, it's basically an organic paint it's also got some oils in there that help repel insects um, and now that we've actually transplanted this plant into this container its immune system is going to be down a little bit more susceptible to aphids and other you know insects so we're actually going to protect it and the white paint is going to help sunblock it as well so it doesn't dry out um, as we're going into summer. So I'm just, I already pre-mixed this before the video I'm just gonna take a teaspoon, tablespoon amount into a bottle of clear water. And we're just gonna get that into there. And shake it. And we're just gonna spray the leaves. And if you zoom in over here, you can actually see what the product looks like, what looks like when it's finished. It's just got a slight white tint it's basically a light sunblock a nice organic um, sunblock plant, paint for plants and this will help keep it um, from drying out as the roots get established in the pot um, and continue towards growing and having a healthy life so this is the beginning within 12 months we'll have another tree just like this one here behind me um, i hope you enjoyed this video if so please be sure to like it most importantly don't forget to subscribe so you can watch the rest of these ivory organics informative videos Hope you enjoyed it again. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.